Hi everyone, I'm Joanna. And I'm Jenny. And this is Hyphenated, the podcast about living in the hyphen. And uh, uh, Jenny, we have a really interesting conversation set up for this episode. We're actually both kind of nervous for it. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of nervous. Um, You took your stage fright medication, (laughs) me too. (laughs) You don't say, I don't know why. Like, well, I think, you know, West Side Story is for me, like the pinnacle of musical theater, but also, you know, sort of a play that was ahead of its time uh, in some ways in incorporating Latino perspectives into something mainstream. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like, I think one of the most famous plays in the world. And now we're going to be speaking to three of the performers that are in the new Steven Spielberg remake. And it's just, it's a, it, it feels historic is what it feels. You know what I mean? That's what it is. I think that's what it is. <laughs> like, whoa. Because like, when West Side Story came out in Broadway in 1957, it was historic. And then in 1961, when it was a movie for the first time, it was historic. It was ahead of its time for its moment because it Although there are some issues with it in retrospect, it did talk yeah. about race and tensions and immigration and what, what that meant um, and identity. And, you know, even though the creators were these four white dudes, <laughs> they were four Jewish gay men who sort of understood the idea of not belonging and being outsiders and fighting for who you are yes. in the world, which yes. is sort of what this what this movie is really about, what this what this story is really about. And, you know, there's always a criticism revolving around a remake. You know, it's like, oh, why are they doing a remake and, and whatnot? But I think in this case, this remake is important because this time around, they've cast actual Latinos in the Latino roles. There's no quote unquote brown face going on, which is what a lot of people talked about with the original film. Even Rita Moreno, who is in fact Puerto Rican, they still darkened her skin. Whereas in this case, Ariana, who plays the role that Rita Moreno played in West Side Story, I read an article where it was said that she didn't want to audition for this. Like she basically had to be yanked into the audition room. And the reason for that is because she felt like there was no way she was going to be cast because she's Afro-Latina and that she was too dark to be considered, you know, by Hollywood standards. So I'm sure that the original film kind of played a role in that fear and that trepidation to audition in the first place. But my God, are we all glad she did for a multitude of reasons. (laughs) Absolutely. And it's interesting because, you know, in the first version of this film, which, you know, was in the 60s, like it's 1961. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is like pre-civil rights movement sort of, high racial tension America. I mean, it still is, but in a different way. And for Rita Moreno, it was like, she was Puerto Rican, but she didn't fit the mold of what a Latina or Puerto Rican was. So they had to put a bunch of brown makeup on her. And in many interviews, you know, she said like, she hated it because it just felt like it wasn't her. It felt like they were stripping her from herself and making her into what people thought Latinos should look like. But I feel like with this new context of America, this movie is even more pertinent and we can take away different things from it that are really prevalent and and very important to take into consideration today. So we had the opportunity to talk to Rachel Ziegler, Ariana DeBose and David Alvarez, three of the stars of West Side Story. I got teary eyed. I got goosebumps. I laughed like this conversation just felt like we were five people just talking. And I'm, I'm so glad that they took the time to talk to us and I hope you all enjoy. Guys, thank you so much for meeting with us. We're two Latinas in the entertainment space and this movie speaks so much to us and you guys are absolute stars. So thank you, thank you so much for joining us. And I know these days are intense. So. <laughs> yes, you might get tonight's the premiere. I'm gonna be there. So I'll see you guys <laughs> in the red carpet. We're <laughs> cute. <laughs> <laughs> so like Joanna was saying, our podcast is about living in the hyphen and identity. And at the end of the day, this movie speaks to us, not just as Latinas, but because the story is about people grappling with identity and their place in the world. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
So in this movie, you know, we have on one hand, the white Americans, the Jets, who are in turmoil and fear of losing their space in the world, which is very pertinent to today. Um, and then you have the Puerto Rican characters who are mostly caught between two worlds, which I think so many of us feel. So our first question is, have you guys felt like you're caught between worlds? Mm. And how did that inform your performance? 100%. I mean, I... I am the happy ending for Maria and Tony that they never got. Um, my my dad is Polish and my mom is Colombian. Um, and therefore I always lived in the hyphen of being Colombian American. And uh, I, I think it's so wonderful the way you just explained it. it it's so true to so, for so many people who are living in the States with this identity crisis that we're constantly having. I know my own identity is a constant evolution. I'm very proud to be where I come from, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone's always proud of me because mm. of, of the other places I come from too, or like this idea that you are half something and half something else. Mm. What does that mean? And so I've definitely had trouble grappling with that my entire life. And, and I hope that people are able to see our film and, and see that represented in some way? That's an excellent question. Yeah. Like you guys are not enough. Like oh, you're not totally always, Latino yeah. or totally always this. Always that, always yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's been, you know, Rachel and I share that. It's been my entire life, like literally mm -hmm. my entire life. Um, you know, I'm, I'm afro Latin. and my mother is white. My father is afro -Lat. Um, You know, I was born in North Carolina, raised in a very white community. Wow. Um, and so I, a friend of mine was like, did you ever feel like displaced? Like you just feel displaced from birth? And I was like, kind of. I was the only one who looked like me. Mm -hmm. And, then, you know, so I went from, you know, space to space, people asking me, are you adopted? Are you, are you black? Are you Latina? I'm not black enough in certain circles. I'm certainly not Latina enough in other circles. Right. Um, and Lord knows I'm not white enough. But I'm sympathetic. <laughs> to all of the lived experiences, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a, a little bit of everything in me. So I walk through the world, you know, with, with a lot and I'm queer. So, you know, mm -hmm. add something else in there. So that. many hyphens. So many, so many hyphens. hyphens. Yeah. And we love you even more for it. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, in my adulthood got to the space of like, if you don't celebrate all the things that you are, nobody else is going to. So mm -hmm. I had to change my own narrative. I had to take, you know, take control of my own narrative. And, and I think it's something to be celebrated, all of the things that make us who we are. Because at the end of the day, let's get something straight. Puerto Rico is a port. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Puerto, oh, and it's rich, Puerto. I guess. <laughs> it's a port. Historically, so many people came through the, on the passage across, across the sea, across the ocean. They uh -huh. stopped through all of these islands right? Mm -hmm. Coming from Africa, coming from Europe. That's a melting pot. It's like the ultimate melting pot down there. We're all a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Anyways, Hop let me get off my soapbox. No, I, love, I, love, it. I love what you just said. Yes. <laughs> Be on a soapbox uh, in my house forever, honestly. Uh, <laughs> how about you, David? Yeah, I think it's um, definitely an identity issue. I grew up um, you know, my both of my parents are Cuban. They defected Cuba in the 90s. Um, and it was always that constant struggle of should, you know, should my parents teach me my culture? Should they teach me um, where, where I come from? Or will that harm my assimilation into America? You know, and it's kind of like mm -hmm. this fight between I, I want I want to feel Cuban or I want to feel part of the Latin community, but also I'm not a really allowed to feel that because I'm not assimilating to the American culture, to the American society. So you grow up not feeling enough of anything, not feeling an Latin enough, not feeling American enough, not feeling anything. And it, I, you know, in the end, it yeah. honestly, it makes you stronger because you tap into who you are, you tap into what your unique essence is, and then you bring that out as an artist to create the things that you want to create. So um, I think it's, it's a hard journey, but it just makes you stronger. Oh my God. And when you were on set, did you ever think back to moments where you sort of had these identity crises or did this experience sort of for foment and clarify who you felt you are. Yeah, um, absolutely. It definitely, it definitely reaffirmed who I am and 
what my culture is and where my parents came from and the struggles that they had to go through to to give me a better life. Um, and in fact, it's just given me more pride and, and more love for where I come from and almost like I'm allowed to accept myself now. I'm allowed to accept who I am. And I think this is an incredible thing about this project is that Steven Spielberg, Tony Kushner, just a whole creative team gave us that chance to really learn who we are and, and be okay with that. Be fine with accepting that and showing that to this world. Um, and I think it's an incredible, almost revolutionary thing what this movie means to the Latin community. It's opening doors for the entire community and kind of we're being taken seriously now and then giving wow. jobs and we're allowed to be artists in America. And that's, mm. that's the greatest gift that I think Steven Spielberg has given us. Major. And that and you're allowed so... to be your, your, your own version of yourself, not a version that is exactly. painted on you. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And as a Cuban American myself, man, David, what you just said, I got teary eyed because for so <laughs> long, everyone was like, get rid of your Miami accent, change yeah. your last name. This was like, you know, seven years ago. And now it's yeah. like, we belong here, you know, and we can have whatever accent we want and be who we are as people. So Thank you. Yeah, for thank you guys. Spanish. You can speak Spanish on screen without subtitles now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I look like an Irish barmaid, but I am uh, <laughs> as Venezuelan as they come. I promise. Yeah. I love that about you. That is the whole thing. <laughs> Rachel. I love you guys. Uh, oh, Rachel. And so, uh, Rachel, you actually played Maria on stage before being cast in this movie. Yes. So, how did being directed by, you know, this like little director, I don't know if you've, uh, you know, the listeners have heard of him, Steven um, Spielberg, Spielberg, how did uh, being directed by him? An up and coming you, indie director, uh, Steven yeah, like, Spielberg. <laughs> was totally up and coming, no up idea who he is. I've um, heard of him. <laughs> how did he help you understand and approach the character differently than you had before? I actually had no direction the first time I did it. It was, oh, like, God. it was one of those instances where like, you know, no shade, no tea. Uh, we were very lucky if the director showed up to rehearsal, he was going through like major life changes at the moment. And he like rarely ever showed up. <laughs> so um, truly like I kind of was hung out to dry in that, in that uh, production. And, and I was, I leaned on my fellow castmates, Gianna Grasso who played Anita was, you know, we were best friends and we just kind of were like, okay, this is what we're doing now. Um, oh, so, you know, you compare that to the experience of showing up to a Steven Spielberg set where so much care has been taken with the production and the representation and getting to have long, lengthy, amazing conversations with Tony Kushner, who has thought of everything in regards to your backstory and also talks to you and collaborates with you about not only your lived experience, but your ancestors. You know, my abuelita came to Hoboken, New Jersey, when she was, uh, she, it was 1968, and my mother was born here um, in this great city when, uh, you know, in 1970. And so it was that conversation. How many jobs did your abuelita work? She worked three. So, you know, we were having those conversations and, and getting to incorporate that into Maria's character and the way she carries herself through the world while also holding space for the fact that she's only 18 years old and she thinks she has this super broad worldview. And I was 18 years old too. And I thought I knew everything about everything when in reality, I knew absolutely nothing. And, mm -hmm. and Maria's about to learn every possible lesson she can in the next 24 to 48 hours and she has wow. no idea so um the direction like you said this, this, this <laughs> little guy named Stephen, um it's amazing and it's amazing to watch him work and to approach the material with such care i truly don't think that there's anyone on the planet who loves west side story more and so there was no better person to usher it into this new generation it's interesting. You guys even went to like ancestry.com to figure out your backstory. <laughs> what was the third job my abuela had? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, it was that. <laughs> so Ariana, you play the role originally played by Igat Rita Moreno. Right. You share one scene with her in this film, which is, you know, one of the most intense scenes in this movie. How was acting with Rita and specifically in this scene? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I definitely didn't think about the fact that I was acting with Rita. There was no time, you know, <laughs> <Got him. laughs> honestly, there, there really was no time. This is like 
focus on playing the truth mm -hmm. of the moment mm -hmm. um, because, you know, even, yes, Rita and I in real life, we're very different Latinas, completely different lived experiences. And you see that reflected in this film beautifully. Genera generationally, we're different. And that all comes to a head in that scene. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, you know, you have a black woman, a black Latina, looking at a white Latina of a different generation and holding her accountable in the moment of you're defending them. Look what they did to me and you're defending them. Perhaps you are part of the problem. Mm -hmm. This is essentially the subtext there. And that, mm -hmm. you know, had Anita been played by anybody else who was not a black woman, yeah. the subtext would not have been there. And I don't know that it would have been as powerful. It's I'm, I'm really heartened by that. It gave us mm -hmm. so much to play with and use. I know that day was really hard for Rita. She has since spoken about it being very hard for her to get inside the scene because mm -hmm. her brain and her body was telling her that she was still supposed to be Anita. Like, I cannot imagine the, the inner mm -hmm. discourse that was coursing through her veins at the time. Wow. Um, but it, it gave us so much energy to use. Right. So it was actually a really powerful day as psychologically warped as it might have been for mm. both of us. Because here I am looking at her in the face, knowing in my brain, I know she is who she is, but I also know that she is Valentina and she must represent a certain thing in the context yes. of this scene. That is wild. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, oh my, oh gosh, my gosh, this woman who has opened up so many doors for me just by existing is yeah. also playing a woman who in the context of the scene is very problematic for my character, yeah. despite the fact that she's the person that comes in and saves her. Ah. But it's also if, it's, but what you said, if that character was played by someone mm -hmm. who wasn't you, that subtext would just simply not be there. It wouldn't be there. And in my opinion, perhaps the scene might've fallen flat. It would have been iconic because you've got two Anitas in the same moment. Claro, but but. It, I think that's part of what makes the moment really special and even more charged. And I'm really glad that it exists because, you know, years to come, hopefully there will be someone who does, you know, a deep dive into what that means. Go do a thesis and let's talk about mm -hmm. what's really happening in that scene. It's, it could be a really wonderful conversation starter that could encourage ep empathy amongst us all, especially oh, yeah. between Absolutely. Latinas. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, yeah, that's right. That. Me and Jenny always talk about how, like, you know, the narcissism of small differences and how um, people take away your Latino card in whatever way they can, um, which is very ironic in a space where we are so absolutely diverse, multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-everything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many movies and, and shows that are quote unquote Latinx still put us all in like one sort of como que happy little family and we all look the same and we all act the same and there's no problems between us. Um, when in fact, there's a lot of issues within our community that doesn't make us any less strong, yeah. but we got to talk about it. We need to be addressed. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I think there that's interesting you bring that up about like we we're really good at policing how we all get to be <laughs> Latino and that fast. Yeah. We do it in the black community too. We police what's black enough. Mm -hmm. I think every community has that though. You know what I mean? And I think in order for real change to happen, we have to address some of the issues that are going on within our community. Mm -hmm. We're really good at criticizing other communities, but are we talking about our own issues and how we treat each other? It's very no, rare. No. No, we, we will discuss, and Jenny always says this, we will discuss about how like tamales, like, oh my God, you made the tamal wrong, therefore you are no longer accepted here. But then you try to bring up conversations that are more complex and difficult and people yeah. back away, right? Like, yeah. oh, no, 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 Sorry, you know, so colorism, this, that, I don't want to. It's ugh, uncomfortable, but <laughs> it needs to be discussed in media. Mm -hmm. I, and it, and I'm glad it's being, it's, it's happening here and may it continue to happen because it has to, and it, it even in comedy, even if you're doing a yeah. straight sitcom, I think it's yeah. important. Yeah, yeah. Agree. absolutely. So David, you uh, won a Tony at 10 
Am I correct in that? <laughs> Mira eso. Ten years right. old. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, don't, I was having Lunchables and dropping out a tap dance and you were <laughs> winning at Tony. Like, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like an owl in my Christmas play at like a small Christian school in Miami. And you were He was Tony. 15. Guys, he was That's, 15, right? You were, you were 15? 15. I was 15. Was 15. <laughs> and I was okay, this actually time. does make a difference. This makes a slight, but not too big of a difference. Not okay. A little bit. 15, still. <laughs> 15 um and from what we understand you were sort of out of the acting world um for a bit where you were backpacking through latin america um yeah. and you just got a call from someone and they were like are you interested in this <laughs> like yeah. how did uh, oh well, my god yeah it's it's kind of a crazy story um i left just the art business because i was so disappointed in it um mm -hmm. it, it because of the Latin representation, I felt like there were no roles for me. There was nothing for me to bring to the table um, mm. in, in America. I just felt like all the roles were white male leads or white female leads. And that's, you know, I, at most, I'd be like a good background, you know, that that's mm. as good as I could get. But that's why I kind of left the art business and kind of went to just discover my life, what I wanted to do, what I what what is the meaning of my life what what's the purpose what what are my dreams what do i actually want to do in this life um and i ended up yeah i was backpacking through mexico for about three years wow. and, and finally I, I get a random message on my on my social media and it's from casting director cindy tolan and she messages me hey i remember i saw you in billy elliott mm -hmm. for a kid um would love to, if you could send in a self tape for the role of Bernardo. Um, and, you know, I, I thought it was such a long shot. I, I didn't really have any expectations to it, but I do know that Steven Spielberg is one of my all time favorite directors period. So I, I just felt, you know, I have nothing to lose from at least sending this tape to someone who I admire so much to someone who truly I feel brings incredible art into this world that's the people i want to work with so i sent that tape and the you know here i am the rest is kind of history it's um it's crazy i, I i'm just so fortunate that i i got to work with him and he kind of brought that passion and and life that i had for art um in general and and i'm so grateful for that because i was disappointed and he made me realize why art is so important and why um, I should fight for it. Mm -hmm. And your character was given more context in this iteration than in the last movie. Um, how did like how did that play out? And how did you feel knowing that Bernardo was sort of this more fully fleshed out type I mean, of character? Yeah, that's really all the credit to Tony Kushner. Um, he, really, <laughs> he really wanted to develop these characters and go into depth of what their fears are, their strength, why they do the things that they do. Why are these gangs fighting? Um, there was just so much backstory and so much to implement and, and so much to share that once we got on set, we knew what we had to do. Tony Kushner gave it to us, you know, and, and we just had to play it and bring what we thought was unique about us and, and give it to this character. So um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just grateful that I had these legends um, trying to make it feel good. <laughs> you know? Well, and now you guys are legends, you know, I think this film is going to be mm -hmm. played for generations and generations. It's going to be, you know, the movie I see with my kids and hopefully my kids see with their, their kids, because it's, it's one of those movies that, that I think represents it's so pertinent to the now it still is. Uh, and it's really brought new context and, and new understanding to these concepts of identity and who we are and, and where we belong in this world. Mm -hmm. um, what was for you guys, the most challenging aspect of, of doing this, this work of art? I mean, I think it's so emotional. I think it was hard for me at least to not take it home with me every night. And I failed miserably at that. I was, I mean, especially the final scene, I felt it in my body for days and days and days after this building wow. of, um, of holding the gun in my hand. It was really hard and pointing mm -hmm. it at, 
uh, at Josh Andre Rivera, who plays Chino, it was very hard and mm -hmm. really hard to go through these excruciating emotions of of loss and and trauma, uh, and and also the the conversations that I had with Tony Kushner about what happens when the credits roll, and then this one you really care, you care about what happens to Maria, you care about what happens to those the people who are left and. Um, I think that was really hard for me. It was hard for me to think about the letter that Maria sends home to her dad um, in Puerto Rico when the credits start to roll. Well, how, what does she say? Bernardo's mm -hmm. dead. Um, and so is the guy who killed him. And so is the guy that Bernardo wanted me to marry because he killed <laughs> the other guy. Like trying to mm -hmm. explain this to her dad um, who, who took a risk letting her go to Nueva York all by herself in the first place. So... Mm -hmm. You know, that was really hard for me. Anyone else? <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, that was a lot. <laughs> was a lot. We all had we all had mo moments, you know, within the context of this film. It's it's a very heavy back act, you know. Once that rumble yeah. happens, it gets oh, really yeah. heavy. I mean, mine, I have a feeling I know what uh David's is, but I'll let him tell you that. But mine was um <laughs> the the candy store scene, the rape scene. You mm. know, you don't um your body knows that it is well, no, your mind knows that it's not real. Yeah. Your body does not, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I don't, even when I sit and watch the film, that's the part that I close my eyes and I don't look yeah. at it. Really? Because I still feel it. Um, I yeah. still very much feel all of their bodies on top of me. And the reality of that situation is there are women in the world who have experienced exactly that. And while it's born of great grief for the entire moment, it doesn't excuse it. And, you know, women are still fighting being heard and taken seriously mm -hmm. about the fact that these things Absolutely. happen so things are happening that lives with me um wow but what is what do you live with david <laughs> oh my god <laughs> david, like, I, have to I think this. the i think the the rumble um the the knife fight with uh you know riff mike feist um ansel um that was so emotionally charged uh, it was a whole week of night shoots from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And you had to be in this mindset of kill or be killed. You know, the, just this. And, and I don't like to be in that mindset, but it it was interesting to to at least experience that with such wonderful actors next to me. Um, and there was a lot of camaraderie. There was a lot of um, this the sense of we're creating something really special here. Um, and we really wanted to make sure we could bring to the screen that just the fear, the fear that these kids, because they're they're kids, and 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 we wanted to show that fear of what it's like to understand that you're about to kill and you're about to be killed. Um, and how do you get out of that at that point? You know, so it, it was definitely very emotionally charged. Um, it took me days after that to kind of get out of that mindset. Um, right. and go back to, Hey, I love people. <laughs> you know, like, oh, oh, man. I have empathy. <laughs> it's all good. I have empathy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, your yeah. actors, you're very empathetic people and going through that must be incredibly challenging. I cry with Home Depot commercials. So, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. I wish we could stay here forever. Um, we appreciate your time and thank you for making such wonderful work. Um, we hope to see you guys in your bright futures many, many, many a time again. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for having, having a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Thanks. And Rachel, I co-wrote uh, um, Princess of South Beach. So you are the best I Gloria knew. I could have ever imagined. I know your name. Joanna <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were wonderful. And Thank, Thank you, you for, for writing it. It was so funny. I love it so much. And I actually am like an avid listener because I only got to record my parts. So I don't know right. what happens in the rest of the script. So I've been reading uh, and listening. It's so fantastic. So thank so you. Ridiculous. So you brought it to life, girl. You brought it to life. Thank you. And, <laughs> and thank you, Adi. And thank you, David. You guys are lovely. So much, you guys <laughs> tonight. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>